Hi, Peter Charles here, Fooked for Life, Fly Fishing. And today we're going to look at the various kinds of floating and sinking leaders that are available. In particular, I'm looking at two manufacturers. I'm going to look at Airflow and Scientific Anglers. Uh, now, I used to be Airflow uh, Pro Staff at one time, so I only used um, Airflow products. But now, I can use anything. So I've also got myself some scientific angler sonar tips. I've also got uh, one Versa leader from Rio. I'll planning on picking up more later on. But for today, we're going to look at sonar versus poly leader. So what have I got here? I've got uh, three sonar leaders. I'm missing the type six, uh, which I plan to pick up shortly. Now in poly leader, I have here, uh, clear floating, clear and immediate, fast sinking, super fast sinking. Also up here I've got a couple of other ones that are available. I'm going to work with these because I weighed these four. Uh, we'll talk about what that means and what the advantages are. The biggest difference between these two setups is the sonar leaders are a constant weight. So every one is around 50 grains, give or take a little bit. When you get into the polylator setup, there's a big difference in the weight. So let's get started and talk about the weights. I've got them here. So these were all within 47 to 50 grains. Fine, great. So they're also available in 35 grain uh, types as well. So the nice thing about that, when you've got consistent weight, is you have consistent casting. So it doesn't matter which one you put on, it's going to cast the same because the weight is the same and the taper is the same. However, when we got into the airflow ones, it got a little bit different. So the clear floating was 32 grains, the intermediate was 34, and the type 3 fast sink was 38. So first off, they're lighter than the sonar, but you could get the light sonar ones if you wanted that grain weight area for around 35 grains. The thing about them being lighter means that these sinking ones, the intermediate, the fast sink, and the slow sink, are going to sink a little less deep than the equivalent sonar tip because they're lighter. So if I compare this fast sink to this fast sink, I'm going to get a slightly better uh, sink rate out of this in moving water because it's heavier for the sink rate, okay? So that's the important thing when you're dealing with identical sink rates, the heavier one is going to sink farther. The problem gets up until we get into the super fast sink airing and the extra super fast sinking. I only have a trout version of the extra super fast sink. So this was 32, 34, 38. This is 91 grains. 91. You're jumping from 38 to 91. So what that means is there's a huge casting difference between this. This is getting close to T10, right? And this one as a trout is 63 grains. Imagine putting that in the end of your four weight. Oh, that's going to work real well. That's heavy. So, I mean, you got to realize that that trout one with its 12 pound core is heavier than this sonar leader with its 25 pound core. These, by the way, here, the salmon steel have, have 24 pound core. So core strength, toss up. But that's the kicker. Huge weight difference when you get up into the tungsten impregnated, super fast and extra super fast. They're super, super heavy. So it really changes the way they cast and the way they fish. And that's something to keep in mind. So when, if you want to jump up to these, the two densest versions in polyliters, you're going to pay a price in the sink rate, uh, sorry, in the casting. You're, you're gaining the sink rate, but you're going to pay a price in the casting. So you almost got to think of these as these two heavier ones are like Skagit tips, basically, because they're so heavy. So wrap the weight part up, constant weight with the sonar all over the map with the polyliter. And uh, it makes a difference in your casting. So as soon as you put the heaviest, densest ones on, you'll really, really notice it. So if you're staying with in these uh, floating to fast sink in this area, you're not going to have any problems with casting. You're just going to be as good as the sonar. But, uh, you know, this guy's going to be the problem and it's stable mate. Now, in terms of the taper, they are different as well. 
uh, the sonar are have a, a level uh, section, six foot long, which is level than the, than four foot tapers. In the uh, poly leader, it's you got a one foot level, and then you've got seven foot of taper, and then you've got two foot level for the tip. Functionally, it's not going to make a huge difference. You're probably not going to see a lot of difference in how they perform, but you will get marginally smoother casts out of the poly leaders because of the longer taper. You'll probably get a little bit better turnover with the sonar because you've got a level section and a tapered tip. So if you've got bigger flies and you're struggling to turn them over with these guys here, then these guys will do a better job. This will give you different turnover problems because it's so heavy. So if your line turns it over, it'll turn over the fly, no trouble. But uh, the trouble is getting your line to turn it over. So if you, for example, if I'm using a rage head, um, I have zero trouble casting any of these, right? Including that trout super fast. When I get to this beastie, I notice it. I can turn it over with say a 450 or a 480 range head, rage head will turn this over, but it's not fun. You have to work at it because you have to be a pay, to pay attention to your casting. Small mistakes and it won't turn over. I mean, if you cast well, it'll go. But that's what I'm getting at is, you know, you just don't jump from here to here and expect your casting to, to, to stay the same. So bottom line is sonar, consistent weight, consistent taper, it's going to cast well, going to perform basically the same no matter which one you pick. Here it's up to fast sync, everything's the same pretty well. Vast difference when you go to the next two densities. So keep that in mind. You have greater choice, as you can see, with airflow. I mean, you've got five dens densities, and in the same range, you only have three in sonar. That may be important to you, maybe not. That's the other thing to consider. So what am I using these days? The sonar. Uh, if, I, if I have to go up to something like this, I'm going to a full tip. Uh, I'm not using a leader. So I'll use like a Airflow flow tip type seven uh, or the, the T7 or the T10. And I'll put it on a different, you know, I'll put it on a proper Skagit head. So taking this away, these will all cast easily on your rage head. Uh, and you know, even Scandi, I might take that away. These will work on your Scandi, but when you get into those heavier, super fast and extra super fast ones, you're going to Skagit Scouts, Airflow Scouts. They'll handle that beautifully. But you know, things like Rage Heads and Scandi Heads are going to struggle with that. So keep that in mind when you go shopping for sinking leaders that they're, they're not all the same and there are some performance differences and some of those performance differences may be important to you or may not be, but it's good to know them. Cheers.